Hello, viewers of Jaffa and George Villarreal's What Emporium. I'm Jaffa and George Villarreal, and I'm excited to share with you how to get a speech. I will learn about the world through the English language. Our videos cover a range of topics such as literature, history, science, and more. To provide you with a well rounded learning experience. Regardless of whether you're a beginner or an experienced learner, our experts in curated videos offer captivating and Latin content to help you enhance your language proficiency. Thanks to Sully is one of the significant figures in the history of Catholicism and sacred music. The feast day of Cecilia is celebrated on 22nd of November every year, not only in the Roman, Roman Catholic Church, but also in Anglicanism and Orthodox. The saint is offering honor in the dreams of painting, sculpture, and poetry. During the Renaissance, she was frequently depicted with a harp and a small organ. In her short 30 year life, Cecilia became an icon of sacred music and a model of virtue. This is why Christians around the world consider her the patron saint of choirs and musicians. Join me in exploring the remarkable journey and metaphor mission of Saint Cecilia. No one can be certain about the exact birth and death days of Cecilia, but it is believed that she lived in the 3rd century AD in Rome. Cecilia was born into the noble family during the reign of King Marcus Aurelius Severus Alexander from 222 to 235. From a young age, she showed a passion for music. Her life was devoted to a development of Christian sacred music. She faced relentless persecution of Christians by the Roman government throughout her life. Cecilia remained steadfast in her faith and selflessly aided the poor and persecuted believers. While her peers were engrossed in worldly, worldly pleasures, Cecilia's heart was always turned towards God. She made a vow to remain chaste and dedicated to God. In return for her morality and faith, God bestowed upon her the ability to see her getting angel. In her adulthood, Cecilia parents arranged her marriage to a handsome young nobleman named Bilirian. Cecilia fasted for three consecutive days and prayed to God, the angels, the apostles, and all the saints to safeguard and protect her purity. His records there on their wedding day with the soft melody of a heart playing Cecilia prayed to God, please keep my heart and body pure so that I may not be ashamed. Later, when they were alone in their chamber, Cecilia confided in Valerian about her divine calling and the graces bestowed upon her by God, as well as the presence of her guiding angel, saying, There's an angel who always watches over me and protects me from harm. Valerian being a pagan was skeptical of her words and demanded to see the angel for himself. Cecilia promised to show him the angel if he embraced the Christian faith. Valerian hid his wife's words mm. and sought up Pope Urbanus I, who was in hiding at a cemetery due to the severe persecution of Christians by the Roman authority at the time. Valerian explained everything about Cecilia, but Urbanus deeply moved and overjoyed. While Urbanus was praying for Valerian, uh, Valerian, an elderly man dressed in white like snow, hiding a golden tablet, appeared and recited, One God, one faith, one baptism. One God alone is the fat of all, he is above all, and he is us all. The old man disappeared, and Urbanus performed the sacrament of baptism for Valerian on the spot. When Valerian returned home, he found his wife in prayer with two angels beside her. He's holding a crown, one made of roses and the other of lilies. The angels placed the crown on the heads of both Cecilia and Valerian. From that moment, 
the two willingly dedicated their lives to God. The angel told Delirium, "Keep your hearts pure, to be worthy of protecting these crowns which come from the God of God, never withering, never losing the fragrance." The angel asked Valerian if he had any wishes, to which Valerian requested that his beloved younger brother Tiberius receive the car and the grace of God as well. The angel replied, "Reply, your your request pleases the Lord. Know that Tiberius and you shall both ascend to heaven with the palm of." Martyrdom. A few days later, Tiberius came to visit his brother, brother and his sister-in-law. He was greeted by the enchanted scent of lilies and roses that filled the air, leaving him curious about its source and its profound path on his well-being. While Tiberius was still bewildered, Cecilia explained to her brother-in-law that the pagan idols were meaningless and devoid of power. She continued to expel on the trinitarian nature of God, the suffering and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and compared the heavenly place of Christians with the punishment a sinful humanity would endure. As Tiberius grasped the truth and the teachings of Cecilia, he exclaimed, "So, there is another life I have never heard." And it was speak of it before. Following this、uh, revelation, he decided to follow his brother's example and embrace the faith. And Pope Urban I administered the sacrament of baptism for him as well. From that point onwards, Cecilia, Valerian, and Tiberius lived a life of piety. They distributed their wealth to support persecuted Christians, secretly pray for those condemned. And encouraged them to endure their suffering courageously. At night, Valerian and Tiberius would search for the bodies of Christian martyrs to give them a proper burial. The Roman authorities were infuriated by the actions and apprehended the two brothers, taking them to the temple of Jupiter and deity from Greek Roman mythology. Maximus, a Roman official, was astonished. By Valerian and Tiberius' calm demeanor in the face of death, so he temporarily postponed their execution and brought them to his home to learn about the Christian faith. Here, the two diligently and firmly taught the Christian doctrine to extend that Maximus, his family, and many of his associates requested to convert to Christianity. The following night, Cecilia invited the priests. Baptized them under the Roman legal system, Valerian and Tiberius could not escape the death sentence. They were required to offer incense to the deity of Jupiter, but they refused, leading to their beheading. After the martyrdom of Valerian, Tiberius, Maximus, the new rich, and Macio. Amacio, Maximus Superior. Amacio was furious and had Maximus punished until his death. During the night, Cecilia secretly transported Maximus' body to be buried near the tombs of Valerian and Tiberius in the catacombs of Saint Calistus on the outskirts of Rome, Italy. After the martyrdom of Valerian. Tiberius and Maximus, the Virgin Cecilia sold all her possessions to give to the poor. She continued her mission of preaching, and led for four hundred people to convert to Christianity, baptizing them under the guidance of Pope Urban the First. However, Cecilia was eventually discovered and forced to offer incense to pagan deities. She responded that she wanted to die for her faith. Prefect Amacio ordered her to be beheaded, thus ending the life of、uh, a beautiful and talented virgin who lived a life of Christian faith. Pope Urban the First and the deacons waited until night to retrieve Cecilia's body and bury her in the catacombs of Saint Calistus.
Urbaners the first also built a church on the side of Cecilia's home. Shortly after the pop, Urbaners the first was arrested and executed by the chief of police, Tarsius Arminius. It is evident that in the early stages of the history of、uh, the Christian Church, all the popes, bishops,、uh, priests. Monks and Christian believers were subject to persecution, harassment, and execution. Nearly seven centuries later, Pope Paschal is the first, from eight seventeen to eight twenty four, a fervent mayor of the martyrs, had a dream in which Saint Cecilia appeared and revealed the location of her burial place in the catacombs of Saint Callistus. Pope Paschal the first located the tomb and discovered relics of Saint Cecilia, Valerian, Tiberius, Maximus, and even Pope Urban the first. What was particularly remarkable was that the body of Saint Cecilia had not decayed. Pope Paschal the first transfers the relics to the Church of Saint Cecilia in Trastevere during the church renovation in 1599. Cardinals von Drado interested to. The restoration of the church to the talented sculptor Stefano Modano once again they witnessed the intact relics of Saint Cecilia. Before several witnesses, Cardinal Fondrado personally opened the ancient wooden coffin that contained Saint Cecilia's remains. Her body remained intact, lying on its side. With a visible wound on her neck, the sculptor Stefano Modena was commissioned to depict what he had witnessed. Saint Cecilia's statue is depicted lying on her right side, her head tilted slightly, and a cloth wrapped around her head. Both her hands are resting at her knees, with the fingers on her right hand、uh, extended. Her body is depicted in. The exact pose that was observed. The statue is considered significant work in the history of Baroque art and showcases the phenomenal Modena's exceptional talent. Saint Cecilia is the first incorruptible martyr left an enduring legacy. Her life serves as a shining example of dedication to faith and purity. She not only placed her love for God above all else, above all else, but also led many others onto the path of faith and the cross. Cecilia's mission has left a revered mark in the history of Catholic Church and sacred music. She lived an admirable life, and the love and reverence for her will forever reside in the hearts of those who respect. And my heart. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Your questions, comments, and feedback are always welcome and appreciated. So please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please to hit the like button as a cry to our channel for more interesting and lighten the content by hitting the notification bell. You'll be sure to never miss any very exciting and thought-provoking episodes. Don't forget to share our channel with. Your friends and family. I may also find our content very beneficial. We are committed to providing you with high quality, well-researched, engaged content that will help you improve your English language skills and expand your knowledge. I look forward to sharing my insightful, inspiring things with you in the near future.